the players' ability to use the ball, their um, simple ball skills. It was uh, just a delight to watch. There's uh, Collins going through. Collins threw a, he threw a 25 metre pass before off his, um, off his left hand. You know, it's, it's skills like that we don't see in every uh, in all the top teams in world rugby. Loose forwards were able to throw passes left and right. The advantage has passed after Alessandro Zayn's knock on. And Sibivato again. Tom's got a sevens feel about it now, isn't it? Certainly the way. Uh, this, is a, this is the danger for the All Blacks now. They can't loosen up like this. And the crowd willing to tell you open that line, aren't they? They're inside the All Blacks 22. It's Troncon. The ball is there. They need a scrum half, though. Nobody willing to do the job at the moment. There's Mirko Bergamasco. Taken on, though, by uh, Pedagini. That's good ball there. Good set up there. They can't go in by themselves. They've got to be working in twos and threes if they're going to take him on around the fringes. It's all very slow, though, isn't it? Well, they haven't got much choice, have they? Your back defence, very solid. Good work, Jerry Collins there. Oh, yeah, the referee going to blow that up for accident. Lofside, no, he's not. He's, he's very lenient with the Italians there. Troncon. Here's the fullback in the line. Feeds inside to uh, Stanieyevic. All Blacks covered that very well. They're shifted well. The, the, the inside defence guys working really hard there in the black jerseys so far. Andrew Musson taking it up that time. Here's Troncon. So the desperation to get in position quickly. We've got Woodcock there waiting to waiting to launch himself into it. Again, it's more pressure at the breakdown. That's good news for the Italians. They have managed to maintain the ball, but the All Blacks put them under immense pressure. So Italy will have the put in at the scrummage into the last seven and a half minutes or so of the half. New Zealand lead by 43 points to nil. Just have a look at the All Black work at the breakdown there. One tackler and one guy in to compete for the ball. The others get out of the way and take up the width of the field. First thing they do is seal off that ruck area, making sure that there's no, no holes for Troncon to go into. As we come back there, that was the mark called earlier by um, Leon McDonald because he had one foot inside the 22 and uh, 80 metres after. Sivivatu, seven points, or five points. It was the conversion missed by Carter. Six tries scored so far, five of them converted, plus a penalty from Dan Carter, the try scorers. Sinovatu, he scored two, McCaw scored the first two, one each to Doug Howlett and Mills Mulliana. Good scrum, Italy. Andrea Massi held up. Again, the inevitable tackler, Richie McCaw. Troncon. Quickly through the hands there of uh, the captain, Bortolami. That's the All Blacks 22. Troncon continues to work the short side. Castro Giovanni doesn't even get up to the game line there. Great hit there by Byron Kelleher coming in over the top of Giovanni. Castro Giovanni then. Again, just look at that. This All Black defence working incredibly hard. The organisation. Very impressive. Look at this, right in behind. And De Marini with a chip and chase. Neil McDonald with a catch and then the uh, disapproving look. Well, I thought this was going to be an area where the All Blacks in the past had proved shown to be a little bit suspect, but uh, today they're covering, they're covering everything. Absolutely no, no weakness there in behind the line at the moment. It's an interesting kick. It's McAllister. Straight down route one, picked up by David Portalusi, the fullback. Ryan Carrier in there, but Portalusi claims it for the Italians. Troncon and Marini. They're just too flat, they're too flat, there's no depth on the play. That's Paris. Soliano coming right at the top there, the referee's got to penalise him there. Yeah, certainly coming right over the top there. Italians just need to take a little more depth in their play. Everyone's in the same line at the moment. 
As we have a look here, if he holds his position there, or you look at this, he's just fallen over, but you look at the position, the body position of Richie McCaw, very strong, solid position there. Very hard to move from that position when he's got that wide base, putting pressure on the ball, very difficult to clear out. John Cole pops it up to within 10 metres of the New Zealand line. Fabio Ngara. Got a reasonable structure here, the Italians, and they've just got to keep their discipline and hold their speed. The All Blacks defending on ones and twos at the moment. Just got to try and keep it square. They've got to keep it. Well, how has Heyman got through and stolen that? How has he done that? Marvellous work by the man on his way to Newcastle. At the end of this tournament, Keller to Carter. And to Leon McDonald, who's in pursuit. Well played. Good hands there from the Italian. That's Massey. But again, ball stolen. Easy steal there by Silvi Vato on the tackler, and now he's gone and lost it again. He stole that, you stole that, but then it was lost forward on the floor. Sorry, David. Well, well summed up there by uh, the referee, Wayne Barnes. So into the last four minutes of the first half here at the Stad Velodrome. The All Blacks lead by 43 points to nil, and Martin Castro Giovanni. It's interesting, the clock is still running. This seems to be a problem so far during the World Cup, as the, the times haven't worked, it's just been blowing off now. But uh, the, the clock has been a, in, the, in the game last night as well. Referee, same time off, but you know, losing 30, 40 seconds here and there uh, can add up to it. And uh, when you're trying to score tries at the end of the game to win, as the French were, were last night, maybe they lost two or three minutes through the clock not being stopped at the correct time. <laughs> Wayne Barnes just indicating that the clock can start running again. <laughs> 11 metres inside the all-black half. Tron Kong with a put in. Sergio Paris holding with his right foot. Tron Kong back to De Marini. That's a bit of kick. Test again for McDonald. Well done. Well done. Well done. Absolutely solid. His eyes didn't move. And he finds support. That's Muliaina. Muliaina showing his pace. Now he needs support on the inside. The chip forward. Well played by Bergamasco. McDonald's there, as is McCaw again. That's Jack. That's Kevin Mialamu. Good decision. Hold the ball, start up again. Hit the short side. Oh! There's an opportunity here. Here we go. Well. It's going to be the wing, Marco Stanijevic. The man who aided uh, Bristol in their promotion campaign to the Premiership a couple of seasons ago. Has scored a try, an opportunist try, and one of the rare mistakes in this first 40 minutes by the All Blacks. Well, Pierre Bavizier. Well, there it is, and uh, well snapped up by the wing. Very well done. He really gambled on it, didn't he? Because there were three men out, three men in black shirts out there waiting for the ball. You possibly say it's the old, the classic 14-point try, that one, because it looked for, if he hadn't have picked that one off, well, there was a one defender back there, but Sibi Vatu, you're going to back against anybody, one-on-one. Yeah, -on -one. Well, that's brought the loudest cheer of the day, I think, that one. Waterloosey adds the points. So the Italians in the stroke of half time are on the ball. Bevisier, well, not quite unmoved, but not a lot. Just a minute or so to half time. Carter with the restart. Taken by Bergamasco. The Italians no, no, starting to find their feet at last. Fabio Ongaro was taking play outside the 22. Back to De Marini off the outside of the boot. Unfortunately, that's just given the ball away with uh, about a minute to go. So there is a final opportunity maybe for the All Blacks to bite back quickly. The 
Blacks would like to go into the half certainly having uh, been the last last action, last uh, points on the board before half time. Line has been good so far for the All Blacks. Uh, been impressed with Milamu's throwing. He's, he's changed his technique certainly um, since the Tri Nations. Oh, there we go. We've talked that one up and we've got to lost it. But, um, that was intended for uh, Ronnie Sayadu. Italy are penalised. And Sergio Paris. It's almost certainly the last move of the first half. Kelleher to Collins. Wayne Barnes wants them back. Kelleher. Taken forward by McCaw. Strong tackle on McCaw there. But he is excellent in that contact area. Well taken on again by Collins. Gallagher to... Uh, going through there is McAllister taking play inside the 22. Kelleher again. Only Williams lost forward in the tackle. Picked up by Paris. Half time. The whistle goes for half time. And what a first 40 minutes it's been for the All Blacks. 20 years since they won the World Cup. But look at the score there, 43 points to 7. And Simon, I suppose it would be a statement of the obvious, but they are pretty good value for that league. Oh, they certainly are. They've been outstanding. Just watching the body language of the All Blacks coming off here at half-time. Jogging off, keen to get into the into the changing room to get the, uh, chat things through, make a few adjustments. They've got to tighten things up again in the second half. As we said, they're trying to play a little bit sevens, gets a little bit loose. That's not how they've got to, to play the second half. Henry will be demanding they keep things tight. They go back to doing the basics well. Days when even when you're on the replacements bench, you don't turn away too much. Carl Heyman, tight head prop, could prove to be one of the real stars of this tournament. Sorry, Martin, I haven't gone too far away. I've got a bit of shade in the second half, so pretty happy about that. The All Blacks, all the substitutes doing some pretty um, serious warm ups at the moment in the technical area in front of me. And the Italian fans, you mentioned, um, they're very much behind their side when Italy started to improve in that first half. There's a big Italian community in Marseille, and we're only about two or three hours from the Italian border. I reckon they've got about 70 or 80 percent of the support in this stadium, so they can rally a bit in this second half. It could be interesting. So Wayne Barnes gets the second half underway. Roland De Marini kicking deep. Kelleher. And he's utilising McAllister in that position there. That's excellent kickoff work. You know, good set piece work there from the All Blacks. McAllister has played a lot of his rugby with a 10 on his back. And that's uh, David Bortolusi. Already through the century of points in uh, international rugby, Bortolusi. And Milamu will throw in at the line. Top of the line up. Down on one knee, that's uh, Bortolami, the captain. And coming on, wearing uh, 19, Manoa Fossawai, former Fijian. Watch out, please. So the first change is being made of the match. All Blacks trying to peel around the front of the line out there, just not accurate enough with the pass in. The tap down, McCaw had to go down for it and then uh, forced the pass a little bit to Mialamu, which results in the ball going forward. Scrum Italy. We've seen a couple of changes there, Matt. Any details on the injuries? No, it uh, wasn't easy to see. It looked like Alessandro Zani has a thigh problem. He's hobbled off. And also the prop Salvatore Perugini are going, going off. So two changes in the Italy packs. Well, now Temper's getting frayed. 
Carl Heyman, you can see there, eyeballing one of the Italians. Relax, gents, home man. What's up? No problem. We've seen it. Okay. Blue to, to second pass.